Everybody, this is Miss Bomi and as you can see I'm back in the kitchen today with a recipe um, I hope everybody enjoyed my Shida Palooza video by the way and I want to say thanks to everybody who came and also I want to say a big thank you to Jules Christy and Mary who helped me with the dinner for a lasagna on Saturday night I think we served close to 40 people 30 something for sure anyways that being said now that I got the thank yous out of the way I'm going to go ahead and start this recipe for today. Today is a no-bake lasagna recipe. It is a dessert, a very easy one, something that you can make ahead of time. Um, what you're going to need is one package of Oreo cookies like this, okay? And then what you're going to want to do is get them ground up all nice like that. You can either use a plastic bag and a rolling pan and do it that way, or I have a food processor, so doing that made it a lot quicker in the process of getting that done. You're also going to need one cup of semi-sweet um, mini chocolate chips, okay? Uh, a fourth cup of sugar, six tablespoons of melted butter, uh, one package of cream cheese and two packages of jello pudding and just to let you know you also are going to need some cool whip and the container size that you want to get is 12 ounces not 8 ounces kitchen bitch but we'll make do with what we have okay and then also you're going to want a tin a pan um, this one uh, is a disposable one which I thought was great because like if you're making it you just don't want that extra dish to put to wash or put in the dishwasher that's perfect or if it's something that you're going to take you know with you maybe to some kind of get together and you're responsible for the dessert it makes it very easy okay so to get started we're going to move some of these ingredients out of the way here except for the ones that I'm going to use right now so you can uh, see what I'm actually doing here all right, so we're going to take our melted butter and pour that right in to our Oreo cookie crumbs, okay? And kind of mix that up. Get that going really well. I'm also excited because like October's right around the corner and you know what that means. Hockey season. I know for the people who are already doing football are very excited about that. Watching their favorite teams already. Okay. So we got this together. And then now what we're going to do is put this right directly into the pan. This is going to be our bottom, our basis for what's going to get this lasagna layer started. Okay. Get that all in there. Now what you want to going to do is press it down so that you get it all out to the four corners there. So you get a nice base going. So this should make a nice cookie crumb base. Now that we got our base down, what we're going to do is put this in the fridge for about five minutes and then I'm going to get the rest of the ingredients together for the next part. One moment. Okay, so I'm back and I'm getting everything set up for the next phase of what we're going to mix. So now into the bowl is going to go our cream cheese. 
Make sure that you take your cream cheese out ahead of time because you want this nice and soft. And I never can really get these packages open very well. <laughs> it's like a potato chip bag <laughs> waiting for it to go like everywhere. Okay. Plop that in there. Make sure I got this in here all nice and tight. And it's ready to go. So now what we're going to do is just give this a mix. And then while that's mixing, the next ingredient that you're going to go ahead and add is going to be your sugar to this. But you want to make sure that you get the cream cheese mixed fairly well before going ahead and adding your sugar. So I'll be back with you in just a moment. Okay, I'm back and as you can see we got this mixed up fairly well. And I'm just going to this off and get rid of the rest of the cream cheese off of here in a moment. I also forgot to tell you that during this part of the process you're going to also need two tablespoons of milk also. We're getting this mixed up. stir and then after this is done getting mixed in together what you're going to do is use half the container of Cool Whip now and then you're going to use the other half later for another layer. Be back in a moment. Okay I'm back and as you can see we got this all mixed. <clears throat> I don't know how good you can see this and I'm sorry I don't have an overhead camera. But now I'm going to go ahead and add the one cup of Cool Whip to this as well. And then we're going to get this mixed in there well. We're going to get that all together. And then we're going to spread the mixture lightly over our base of our Oreo cookie. that we have in the refrigerator chilling right now. Um, another thing I should mention, if you want to make this more diabetic friendly, there is sugar-free Cool Whip. There is also sugar-free Jello, and probably reduced Oreo cookies to make it so that um, if you are diabetic, that you probably do it that way and make it a um, more diabetic friendly dessert. Okay, I'm gonna get this whipped up and back in just a moment. Okay, I'm back. I'm sorry for all the pauses and breaks, but I didn't figure you'd want to watch me set this up and tear it down and set this up and tear it down for each various stage. So here's what this is going to look like once it's done with Cool Whip, cream cheese, sugar, and milk. So now I took my pan out of the fridge that's been there for a few, five minutes. And what we're going to do is take this and spread this out. And this is going to be our next layer. And you can see I'm getting some Oreo cookie crumb in there. And that's fine too. It never hurts, right? A little extra flavor, right? Goes a long way. There we go. And at each stage of doing these layers, you are going to be putting this in the refrigerator to chill. How's that looking, KB? <laughs> we did make this once before, and I have to tell you, it's delicious. Mm -hmm. uh, gave a piece to my dad, who then in turn gave a piece to the neighbor. And she loved it, and my dad loved it. So. 
I'm pretty sure that just about everybody, everybody that likes chocolate <laughs> and has gotten their hands on it has said it's been really good. There we go. So, just make sure that we get this all in the corner. Get the little last scoop out of here. And I'm going to put that in the sink <coughs> right now. And then, this is going to go into the fridge, like I said. And you'll want this to sit in there for at least five minutes. If it sits in there a little bit longer while you're doing your next step, no problem. It'll just give it extra time to settle. And there we go. So this is what it's looking like so far. All right, I'm going to put this in the fridge and I'm going to take a pause, set up for the next phase, and I'll be right back with you. Okay, I'm back and here we go. I've taken this out of the refrigerator, okay, and it looks like it's settled a bit. So the five minutes. Um, you're putting, of course, just follow the directions, which is milk and your pudding. So, let me put that aside. I'm gonna, for, I'm gonna try something a little bit different this time for all those people that are a little bit of chocoholics. I'm gonna put down some, some of these miniature chocolate chips. Now, I didn't use the whole package last time. Um, or the whole package, the whole cup last time. So I'm just gonna add a little extra something, something here. And that's the beauty of um, recipes when they're simple. You can kind of take and try something and make it your own and you know, see if you like it. Maybe you don't want chocolate chips. Maybe you prefer strawberries or raspberries. Excuse me, that might be something that would be, you know, worth giving a whirl too. The chocolate and the sweetness of the fruit, I would think, would be a pretty, pretty good combination. So, seeing as I have extra, I put this down. Maybe if you're making it more diabetic friendly, you might want to. I would suggest maybe using fruit or um, skipping the chocolate chips altogether. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and put the pudding in here. Get that spread out. And this is our next layer. Make sure to get the edges there. Lay it out as best you can. The recipe does call for chocolate pudding. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier when I was going through the list of ingredients. So there we go. In time frame wise, since I made this before, it doesn't really take that long. I mean, there's just some you know, some little extra steps with, you know, getting everything mixed together and incorporated together. But for the most part, it's easy and it does go fairly quickly. Okay. Let me just get the last little bit of the chocolate out of here. Let's have a bit if I miss some chocolate for those people who love chocolate. <laughs> Would not be a good thing, I'm thinking. I just want to make sure to get this corner here too. All right. Then what you're going to want to do is go ahead and put this in the refrigerator. I think um, what they suggest for another five or ten minutes to allow the pudding um, to set. Once that's done, then you're going to go ahead and add your final ingredient, which is the Cool Whip. So, so far we've got our layers, which consists of our Oreo cookie, our cream cheese mixture. I added a little bit of chocolate chips onto that, and then of course we have our chocolate pudding. So I'm going to put this in the fridge, give it a few minutes, and we'll be back to finish the rest. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm back and here we go. This has been sitting in the fridge for about 10 minutes. It's given some time to actually settle. And now we're going to do the last part of it, which is the rest of the Cool Whip and some more of the semi-sweet chocolate chips. And I'm just kidding you, Eric, because this will work out fine. I don't need extra whipped cream or Cool Whip. Like yeah, it should be. Should be just fine. You know, double up, double up on the chocolate pudding, not the whipped cream. Yeah, for all the chocoholics out there, right? All right. Put the rest of this on here. Shelby's driving me crazy. I know, she's just going in and out of the house all day long. Yeah. We have like three squirrels in the backyard and I think she sees them from time to time. It's like, hurry up and let me out. I gotta go chase them. Or try to anyway. By the way, here's my retirement plan. Oh, okay. Okay, so this actually was enough Cool Whip. If you are a person who really likes the Cool Whip, then I would suggest a, bigger, a little bit bigger container. If not, this will work out just Fine. Okay. Alright, let me just clean up the around the sides here a little bit because I got a little bit carried away. There we go. And then the last part is going to be sprinkling some more of your semi-sweet chocolate chips on top. Once again, you could do fruit, you could do raspberries, you could do strawberries. You know, make a little less calories if for people who are watching calories and kind of want something that is a sweet type of a dessert, that would work. Or possibly, if you are diabetic, tweaking it a little bit to um, work in your favor. And instead of using regular sugar, I know that um, you can use Splenda also. I know it's something that's used quite a bit for baking and whatnot. Okay. Put a little bit in the corners here. Make sure I got it all spread out pretty good so that each time you take a bite, you're gonna get some chocolate chips on top. Or 20. Or 20 or 30. Hopefully not that many, unless you love chocolates. And I guess that's a different story. And uh, that's basically it. This is what it'll look like when it is all done. And then I was just putting in the refrigerator for a while longer, just to make sure that things settle. At least give it a half an hour or so. And then yeah, you're ready to eat your dessert. And that basically is it. That is the chocolate lasagna. And I got Cool Whip on me. Sloppy today. One day I'll wear an apron. Okay, there it is. Chocolate lasagna. I hope you like the recipe and uh, you'll give it a try. And just wanted to mention one other thing too. Um, we're coming up on the end of a Hornet Fixer giveaway for a rifle. And the proceeds will go to Justin's Final Mission and what is the other organization? The, D the DAV. DAV. So if you want more information, please, by all means, go over there, check out his channel, buy a ticket if you can. It's for a good cause. And I think that's it. More to come. Big ones, yeah. yeah. And there's more things that are coming down the pike as we speak, but... Uh, those are kind of still in the planning stages, so I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. Okay, so that's it. I hope you liked the recipe. Uh, give it a whirl. Tell me what you think. And until then, this is Miss Bomi saying good night, good eats, wherever you are. <laughs>